time, Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. Now, all I want to do today is just look at and appreciate these fantastic hippiastrum blooms. Now, I'm not going to go into loads and loads of detail about how you look after them because I've got another video on that. So if you have got one that's coming to the end of its blooming period, you might want to jump onto that and I'll put a, a card up at the top there. But just for once let's just have a look in detail at these incredible flowers i know they're common i know these ones are no id ones probably cost about five pound each at the supermarket or the garden center but just look at the size of this flower now i did struggle at first to get them to re-bloom and i did like everybody else did i threw them away once they'd finished blooming but it really isn't that difficult and the beauty of getting them to rebloom, not only have you got the satisfaction of that, but this bulb gets bigger and bigger. I'm sure there's a limit to it, but it gets bigger and you get a better flower, a larger flower. You might not want that, but I do. And this one that you're looking at now is fully 75 centimeters tall. It's got two blooms on it at the moment and it's got a third one coming. If you look down at the bottom, there are some leaves coming afterwards. Now, don't worry if yours comes into leaf first before you see a bloom. There's another, I suppose you'd call it a flower spike there. So that's going to come as well. So this particular spike has three blooms on it. They can have four on it. And they don't last that long, if I'm honest. But if you get a couple, then you can kind of get successional blooms. And I don't like to stake them. The trick really is just to keep rotating them. It's quite obvious to see, looking at it, that this side is the shadow side. And this side at the moment anyway, is the light side. So you'll find that whatever side is pointing towards the light, when it begins to go dark at night, that's the side that it'll grow towards. And it does this really quickly, it'll do it overnight. So now I'm gonna turn that so that it's going to start coming towards me because this is where the light is. And that will stop it from leaning. At the moment it's leaning over to the left, so that'll make it go up right. You can get to a point where it's just too heavy to do that. And I believe what it does is it makes the cells on the, I think, I've not looked this up, <laughs> I think it's the cells on the darker side, it makes them grow at a bigger rate. So if you can imagine if that side is growing faster, then it will push it over towards the light. And obviously lots of plants do that stretch for the light. So that's one, just wanted to show you that one. And if we just pop over here to my other one, which is even bigger, so this one, is a fully 85 centimeters tall now on this one the leaves are a much more advanced state i think the leaves did actually come uh, probably about the same time actually as the blooms and this only has one flower spike at the moment i've not really looked down there whether there's anything else down there but this particular one has four flowers on the top of the flower spike there really nice color again just a no id one nothing special and again in that video i talk about why people call them amaryllis when really they should be hippiastrum and again what i will do with this one is i will point it so that the darker side is away from the light so it will start to lean towards the light um, yeah, so let's just have a look inside these blooms. So these blooms, that bloom is, believe it or not, 28 uh, across. So from one side to the bottom, 28 centimetres, that is. I'll put the uh, imperial measurement on the screen as well. So it's a big, big bloom, easily as big as my hand. And I have big hands. So you can see everything really clearly. It's great for showing kids the structure of a flower because you've got all the different parts here from the anther, the stamens, there's a pollen on there. See the pollen very, very clearly. Good for explaining 
all the different allergies that people get this time of year, me included. But absolutely beautiful flower and well worth getting and appreciating and definitely well worth reblooming again. So the only downside for me will be that these leaves are going to have to stay on for quite a few months now to feed the bulb up for next year. But what I'll do, just like I've done here, I'll just kind of strap them up just so that they're not in the way and stick it in a dark corner and eventually I will stop watering it and let it have its rest. And it's really easy actually to control when you want them to flower it's just simply by doing that, just by stopping the watering a few months, a couple of months before you want them to bloom. This salmon coloured one, if that's what the colour it is, it's got these strange little formations here in the petals which makes that quite uh, attractive to me. So yeah, definitely well worth a go. I think they're easy for anybody who's new to bulb growing and you want some colour in your house, especially if you want it around Christmas time, winter time. Um, it's a nice thing to do. I would suggest though that you put it in a very sturdy pot because as you can see, you know, they're so big. The Like I say, the one on the right hand side is about 85 centimetres tall so you can imagine if that was in a little plastic pot it would grow perfectly well but you'd really struggle to keep it upright so yeah we'll just finish off focused in on a beautiful um, uh, sorry i'm going to call it amaryllis beautiful hippiastrum bloom and for now i will see you on the next one bye